been actually working inside of Old Spitalfields Market for the past month about uh, in this kind of practice we call pop-up architecture. Basically, having architects work within the space um, and engage as much of the community as possible in that process. I have to spend my two hours of the day just because of the different group. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be something I just have love to see what was on. It was actually kind of well interesting. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, make it a destination for a day. So this is the group of seven that have been working on this project. Um, I come from the States. There's two of us uh, that studied at Stanford and uh, four that studied in the University of Ljubljana. And then Carolina actually studied at the Technical University of Warsaw. With most of us graduating recently, we thought, let's try to do some professional work. And so we saw a fantastic opportunity to try that out for the first time at the London Festival of Architecture that's been happening this past month. And so we submitted the idea um, without an actual location in mind, but we wanted to sh basically say, we will demonstrate uh, what pop-up architecture and pop-up design means. Um, and they accepted the idea, uh, but wanted us to find a location. In fact, this render was just a random image we found on Google uh, just for the submission. Uh, and once we actually got accepted, we just kind of looked down the street and we found out that there was this market. And it was, from our perspective, a perfect mix of uh, lots of different uses, there's lots of different stakeholders, and also lots of traffic on a regular basis. So we thought this would be a great place to try out the pop-up studio method. Um, so long story short, we got the blessings of the management uh, at Old Spitalfields Market to actually do the project. And also, he, uh, Eric here, became kind of our main client. I'm Eric Graham, I'm the market manager of Old Spitalfields Market. Uh, because he's been working there for the past 20 years. I've seen a lot of changes happen in, in the development and in the site. And he's leaving soon, so his number one message to us is he wants a sense of continuity to what the market represents. I think the heart and soul of what is here now, if you know, probably people listen to this, I'm thinking, all right, you, you know, you can't say that. But I, I, look, if you change this place too much, you change the reason why people come here. We have events that take place here, and there are some of them where we have to close the market down for uh, five days. When we do that, the shops and the, the food people, they hate that because the market, whilst it works better on certain days, it's what it, what it brings people here. The reason why all these shops are here is because what the market brought here. They, they didn't bring the market, we brought them. And I think you have to realise that. What is the catalyst for the growth of this area? Spitalfields Market. Back home anyways. Oh, but the places they will keep you all the same. So that turned into our major objective with the pop-up studio here, is to ask ourselves the question, how do we sustain the market itself for another 20 years? Um, and that involves getting the insights of the whole community, which in our case, for the market, meant the management, the public, and the merchants. My name is Colin, the market trader, uh, trading at Old Spitfield Market since August 2013. We went at this with a view to set up a brand. The last stop for the curious is the name of the business and uh, we treat it very much as a business. As an individual, looking at all the different markets around London, from Tedcoat Lane, up Rick Lane and that, this one has the most potential. Um, it's comparable with Cov uh, Camden Town because it's covered, but here is nowhere near as developed in terms of marketing its history as Camden Town is and that's a shame because it's got a lot to say a lot to tell people but people will always come out people will always come out and socialize and congregate and that it's just where and we have the location and the premise and the originality and the history to draw them to here First thing we wanted to do is just, without disrupting anything about how the market works, just observe as, as the normal members of the public. And it was actually pretty easy to do that because there's a mezzanine floor in the market, so we spent a lot of time up here. And one of the first things we wanted to understand is how does the flow of people through the space work. And we tried a lot of methods to try to analyze this from a rigorous, almost academic point of view. And we decided that ultimately the best way to understand how people move through the space is to, for about two hours at a time, 
just pick random people as they entered and follow them the entire way through. And it sounds a little creepy, but we didn't. We, it was completely anonymous. And the results were actually kind of amazing. Um, most people spent less than 60 seconds in the market if we were picking at random. And then there were the, the people that would spend two hours and we'd follow them for the whole two hours. But this represents mapping all that data onto um, basically the layout of the market. Uh, and in the relative terms, if we extruded this out, this is really what football looks like in the market. With the far end closest to Liverpool Street Station being significantly better than especially the center corridors. There were some corridors that didn't get any of the over 100 people that we observed. And so we knew right away that there was a strange disconnect where the merchants all pay the same price for any stall, but at the same time there's such a, a discrepancy in, in the actual traffic. Uh, we also observed some things on the ground, like um, the current corridors are right on the column grid, and you, it's a, quite a visual obstruction and a circulation obstruction. Uh, lack of public seating, uh, especially during the lunch hours, we saw people were actually sitting on staircases. Um, and then the logistics, um, at the end of the day, at the start of the day, of actually moving these stalls. And the current stalls are just metal frames that are panelized. And so they complained about it themselves, kind of working after those days. And we did a variety of activities. Uh, this was a path study we did to sort of double check the observations we've done, where we asked people to actually tell us uh, where they went through the market. Uh, we also did some really interactive polls. Uh, the question here was, is there enough public seating in the market? And we got 80-something um, percent saying no. And then once we started actually considering different layouts for the market, we would take them on boards and show all the merchants in the space and get the direct thoughts on that. So that was really an uh, effective way to get feedback. And so we came up to week three uh, and four and being out, having to now design something and, and provide a solution. Uh, and we knew that the key was finding something that was sustainable um, and in the mutual interests of the whole community. We noticed that there are some, there, there's a strong flow of people just walking on the outside and the, 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 inner, the inner part of the, the, the market is basically completely empty and in a way this could be changed so maybe if we, we, we create a program that would fill in this, uh, that would attract people in the middle, people would just flow in all the way through all the paths and that would make the exposure for all of, all of the merchants uh, a bit better. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, just, I mean, the first thing you highlighted, that the column was right in the middle of the walkway, and that's, that as soon as the general public walking down there, you know, you, just, you go look at the column and go, it's not really meant for me to walk down there, it's just logic, isn't it? But as soon as you get the columns hidden, like supermarkets do it really well, they have special things designed, they, they actually position the columns inside the, the racks where the food is, that's, these are just all logical things, it, it's very interesting that it's taken you guys to get out there and see that. Yeah. <laughs> it was obvious to us, not quite obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Take you straight, may your compass ever hold true. May your travels be far, but always bring you home. And if the wind falls out of your sails, may your God be there to pick it up again. May the weight of the world never sink your little boat. Once they understand that it's not just them, that there's a big community and they all have value, then we show how many different insights there are and how many different opinions there are and, and needs. And that's kind of the community insights we've done here. And 
then they'll understand, oh, it's not just me. There's many opinions. Those opinions matter, and they're all very, very different. Then they get to the point where we are as designers, where our, our responsibility is to not be selfish, to not be closed-minded, but to think holistically. And in a space like this, the best thing we could do, and the, the thing we try to do here, is find common ground across all the ideas. We can't please everybody, but we can get down to those core values that really make this place work, and use the built form of spaces and architecture um, to try to foster that ecosystem to sustain itself. These are the people who are really using this space, and they are capable of giving you very important insights in the whole design process, because usually when architects hide behind the door, they do not consult people so much and this is a good opportunity to show how architectural studio really works and that uh, actually we are designing for the people not for ourselves with kept this the new generation coming into this area um, over the, over the past period and then there's another generation will come in um, and hopefully when i'm not here there'll be even another generation will and they will bring new ideas to the area as well. And one of the things that used to do with all the businesses I've been involved in, um, and I, I would recommend it to any company, is to have a small team as a think tank and allow that team to take a step back and look at things from a radical point of view. Some of the ideas might be a bit wacky and you say forget it, but from that you can get some real gems. This way.